Let's take a look at an interesting property of transverse waves. That property is called polarization. Here are a couple of pictures of American outdoor television antennas. Notice that in North America the metal rods, called elements, of a TV antenna are positioned horizontally. That is to say they are parallel to the ground. Engineers would say that such an antenna is horizontally polarized. Here are a couple of pictures of outdoor TV antennas taken in England. Notice that in most European countries, the elements of the antennas are positioned vertically. Engineers would say that the antennas are vertically polarized. But why does it matter? Let's investigate this property of waves called polarization. Imagine holding a rope in your hand and then moving your hand up and down vertically causing transverse waves to travel down the rope. As crests and troughs move along the rope, each particle of the rope moves up and down vertically as waves pass. The entire rope is all within one plane, and that plane is oriented vertically. We say that the wave you are generating is vertically polarized. Now imagine holding the same rope in your hand, but this time you move your hand left and right horizontally. Now as the waves move along the rope, each particle of the rope moves left and right from side to side horizontally as waves pass. The entire rope is all within one plane and that plane is oriented horizontally. We say that the wave you are generating is horizontally polarized. Now imagine passing the rope through a vertical slot, like the slot formed between the wooden slats of a picket fence. The first wave you generated by moving your hand up and down, yes, the vertically polarized wave, will pass easily through the vertical slot. The second wave you generated by moving your hand left to right, the horizontally polarized wave, will be blocked by the vertical slot. Thus, it is possible to design a filter that will allow waves in a certain polarization to pass or be transmitted, while blocking waves of other polarizations. We call this type of material a polarizing filter, or simply a polarizer. As it turns out, electromagnetic waves, such as radio waves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light, and x-rays, are transverse waves. Therefore, electromagnetic waves are polarized. As shown in the diagram, electromagnetic waves have a magnetic field vector as well as an electric field vector. The two fields are perpendicular. The polarization of an electromagnetic wave is determined by the orientation of the electric field. When you look at this diagram, you have to imagine a wave coming directly toward you. The arrows show the orientation of the electric field vectors forming the crests and troughs. Rather than being confined to one plane, this wave is vibrating randomly in many planes. We say that this wave is randomly polarized or we can also call it unpolarized. Light coming from a light bulb or from the sun is unpolarized. The reason for this is that light is produced by vibrating atoms, and these atoms are vibrating randomly, each in a different plane. The sum of all those random transverse waves is what we call unpolarized light. Imagine a horizontally polarized light wave coming straight toward your eye. The electric field vectors, forming the crests and troughs, would wiggle back and forth horizontally, left to right in this picture. The entire electric field stays in the same plane, and that plane is oriented horizontally. This is a horizontally polarized wave. Now imagine a vertically polarized wave coming straight towards your eye. The electric field vectors, forming the crests and troughs, would wiggle up and down vertically. The entire electric field stays in the same plane, and that plane is oriented vertically. This is a vertically polarized wave. A polarizer is a piece of material that only allows light with one particular polarization to pass. Think of the slot in the picket fence that only allowed our rope waves to pass if they had the right polarization. Notice from the diagram, unpolarized light coming from the left reaches the polarizer but the polarizer only passes light of a single polarization. Incidentally, the intensity of the polarized light coming out of the polarizer will be one-half of the original intensity. 
If a second polarizer, sometimes referred to as an analyzer, is placed at right angles to the first, no light can pass through. Can you see why? If a polarizer is placed or rotated at an angle to incoming polarized light, only the component of the wave that has the same orientation as the polarizer will pass. You might want to pause this video, study the diagram, and be sure you understand why this is. As a result of what I just described, if E0 is the amplitude of the incoming light, we can calculate the amplitude of the transmitted light by E is equal to E0 times the cosine of theta, where E0 is the original amplitude, theta is the angle of the polarizer measured with respect to the plane of polarization of the incoming light, and E is the amplitude of the light that makes it through the polarizer. You might recall that intensity is proportional to amplitude squared. As a result, the intensity of light after it passes through a polarizer is equal to the original intensity multiplied by the cosine squared of the angle. This relationship is called Malice Law, and it's in your formula book. Here's the formula that you'll use when you actually calculate the intensity using Malice Law. Some types of sunglasses are advertised as being polarized. Polarized sunglasses can remove the glare from the road or from the surface of a lake. Here's how they work. When unpolarized or randomly polarized light reflects from a horizontal surface, the reflected light is partially horizontally polarized. The polarization of the light will be parallel to the reflecting surface. In many cases, the reflecting surface will be horizontal, say for example a road or a lake surface. For this reason, polarizing sunglasses are oriented to only pass vertically polarized light and to block horizontally polarized light. Here are two pictures of the same scene. The picture on the left was taken without a polarizing filter. Notice the reflection in the window. The picture on the right was taken with a polarizing filter placed over the camera lens. Notice that the reflection in the window is gone. When the light from the sky reflects from the window, it becomes partially polarized in a plane that's parallel to the surface of the glass. If the orientation of the polarizer is perpendicular to the polarization of the reflected light, the glare is reduced or eliminated. Polarizing filters are often used in photography for this purpose. Photographers will often use a polarizing filter on their lens to darken the sky and make clouds stand out more vividly. Here are two images of an identical scene. The image on the left was taken without a polarizing filter. The picture on the right is identical, but with a polarizing filter placed over the lens of the camera. Notice the darker sky in the right image. Notice how the clouds stand out better. That's it. We'll see you next time.